You know what it is? This is literally the land of jewelry. Diamonds and guys in funny hats. It's not expensive as you oh, think. Right. It's like a like, 150 pound toy. You end up linking up with people that you've never met, but you're doing millions of pounds worth of deals each month. 40, 34, 28. On the tape, this jewelry thing a lot larger scale, and new high guard is definitely the reason. Yeah. It's the place we need to be. It's not just buying and selling watches, we also can bring your watch back to life. It's an untapped market. I think there's only four or five people doing what we do. That's what a lot of these watches are, you know? You can't get them. Good afternoon. I made it to London, and today we're going to explore Hatton Garden, London's diamond district. We're going to meet up with a jeweler who's going to show us around. We'll speak to the locals and see some of the most expensive jewelry you'll see today. Let's see what Hatton Garden has to offer. Yo, my people, what's happening? Welcome back to the Secret Garden. Another day, another deal. And we've got a 2020 Yacht Master 40 Rodium, complete with box and papers, mint condition, and it's available at a bargain price of nine and a half grand. Yes, you heard it, nine and a half quid. Drop me a message now, and let's get a deal done. Getting the pretty lady in, that's the lady of Hattie Garden, Daisy. If you want a handbag, if you want a handbag or a Cartier bangle, that's who you go to. <laughs> So on this street, does everyone, everyone know everyone? Yeah, literally like, I don't want to be cheesy and say one big family because there's a lot of dickheads here. <laughs> but yeah, you could say that. Yeah, everyone knows each other. Yeah, 100%, yeah. And like the people here, are they, are they your competitors or do you just all work together? Like, um, I wouldn't say competitors because I feel like we're high on the ladder without sounding <laughs> hmm. cocky or arrogant. So I wouldn't call it competition, but obviously there's a few big players. Right. But the few big players have their own niche and have different things, you know? Like, so we do specialise in custom jewellery as well, like pendants, chains, bracelets, wedding rings, things like that. Mm. But our main criteria is watches. So a few of the big players, they might specialise in chains and pendants, right. but not really have specialised in watches. Right, okay. So I wouldn't really call the big players competitors because they've got their own niche, if that makes sense. Mm. So well, like 10, 20 years ago, if you came to Hatton Garden, most people would associate this place with diamonds, mm. but yeah. it's changed a lot since then, right? Diamonds and guys in funny hats. <laughs> that used to be like the, the big thing. But, but what, why has it changed so much? Why has it gone from diamonds and now Guys like yourself have popped up and selling watches. I just think, you know, times change, things change, you know? Mm. So there's still a big community here with diamonds, you know, precious gems, emeralds, sapphires, stuff, things like that. But it's now more of a place where you come to buy a watch. But don't get me wrong, there's people come every day to buy engagement rings and things like yeah. that. But I'd say now predominantly Hatton Garden is for kettles for watches yeah what, what's the slang if you come to if you come to london you're not from around here what's like the lingo you need to know when you're talking oh, so, about jewelry so we just say kettle like kettle of scotch which is like cockney rhyming slang it means watch okay so that's basically i don't really think there's no slangs for chains really i wouldn't really call it slang for like for anything else apart from kettle to be uh, fair so if they, if they come to hatton garden they find you they have to ask for a kettle that's what they're literally that's, yeah that's what yeah. we're asking for literally yeah and just across the street, you have the famous uh, deposit, deposit yeah, area where the, yeah. the heist. Not my, not my uh, era. I wasn't here then. Yeah. But yeah, the multi-million dollar Hatton Garden heist <laughs> happened literally there. It was there, weren't it, Char? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Million, millions of pounds worth of jewellery was stolen. By uh, 70 year old men. <laughs> We got arrested because he was spying on it in a Mercedes car, but wasn't very, uh, it was a quite a rare car. That's how they found mm. it, put two and two together. Okay guys, now we're gonna go into the arcade. This is where you wanna find your watches, your jewelry. This place literally has everything you need. As you can see, there's a lot of hustle and bustle. So we're gonna chat to some jewelers and see what they're selling. This is an extremely good friend of mine. Nice to meet you, mate. He's filming a documentary for YouTube. This is Vianney Jewellers, yeah. aka Snow. He's like similar to us, so like all like newer sort mm. of stuff. So look, Sky Dwellers, Day Dates, Root Beers, Iced Out Watches, yeah. Rings, Chains. That's, so yeah, that's, that's my guy, Snow. So in here you're selling all Rolexes. Is that your main thing that you sell here? Rolexes is the quickest turn over. Okay. We get APs, we get different stuff as well. So if you want to be a jeweller in here in this market, it's best to sell Rolexes. All over the world. Yeah. Other good friends of mine, yeah. Watch Gallery. This is Corey. Corey. I don't know the black one's name. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, mate. But yeah, as, as you can see, like all watches, isn't all it? All watches. Yeah. So, so mainly the arcade is all watches. You get some, some guys who 
do some bits and bobs. But yeah, these are good guys. That's one of Char- okay, Charlie's so artwork. Sold out, skip. So yeah, Charlie's actually a painter and graffiti artist, and he will sell custom pieces. And obviously, that's one of his that he's done before. So we sell a lot of like ladies' day dress. Okay. And these kind of older older pieces here. Mm. Well, we sell a bit of everything, to be honest with you. Yeah. I've seen like lots of guys, everyone's selling like Rolexes, you're kind of selling this like similar stuff. How do you like compete with one another? I mean, I think people, they buy from people. It depends who's in front of you and right. how comfortable they feel. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's quite a big purchase. If you're gonna come in here and spend some money, what's like the minimum you should be bringing? I don't know, I mean, you, you've got, that's what's not, yeah. 5,500. Okay. Well, up to like 60, 70,000. Okay. So it all depends on the customer's budget. Yeah. We've got a bit for everybody. Okay. Yeah. What's. I mean, got one, mate. But if, when I get one, I'll, when I have some money, I'll come in here and spend some. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's like the most expensive watch you guys have sold? Probably that. That. How much does that work? Yeah, What's that? Just shy of 100. Really? 100 grand? Bloody hell. What kind of person is, is spending 100 grand on a watch that's coming in here? He's a big businessman. Yeah, businessman. Big businessman, yeah. When you come in here, can you haggle for the price? You get guys who haggle for the watches and, you know... All give the it time. Really? What's that like? Non-stop. Really? So say if you, what, what's like the minimum spend you should be bringing if you're going to buy one of these watches? The lowest price probably starting around, your best off would be around £1,000. £1,000, pound, okay. And then probably going all the way up to possibly 10s, 20s. Right. This is more like like a classic style compared to like the others that I've seen in like other, other stores. Is that kind of like your niche that you're... Yeah, more vintage. More vintage. More vintage Rolex, Cartier, you know, and things that other people don't really have. So you've got some unusual Piaget's and Omegas. Universal. And, that yeah, versus. things that a lot of other people in here don't have. So when people want vintage, yeah. they come here for something else. Don't they? Yeah, what, what made you get into like being a jeweler and like, how'd you end up in like Hatton Garden? Uh, I've been here for about a year now, after I met Frank. Uh, I just love watches. Bro. Yeah, so you're, you're the owner of the, this boutique? Yeah, we just kind of start new, so we're just trying. Yeah. And yeah, the watch business is a huge business to, uh, especially the heart, it's the main place, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone come and swap. They buy it one week, the next week they can swap it with another one. Oh, okay, so, yeah, oh, so, you, so you find that. So once they've started their like, watch journey, they'll, they'll always replace their watches and want to yeah. upgrade. Yeah. Always upgraded. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's just it's crazy. Yeah. Like uh, upgrading hot cars, like no, they don't. Swap. Okay, right, it's yeah, yeah. non-stop <laughs> buying watches. This is how. How? Nice to meet you. Now. Where are you from? Are you Chinese? Yeah, Chinese. What city? Guangdong. Guangdong. Ah, cool. Yeah. I, I used to live in Qingdao, like in the yeah. north. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah but it looks like Chinese. No, he's, he's Korean. Korean. Yeah. But, if, if, you, if you want something done, like if you want something checked, yeah. he's the guy to like. Uh, what's the What's the legitimate word to use, Sha? Authenticate. To okay. authenticate, you go to how, Mister? How you do it? <laughs> oh, so, so you know how to how to tell if uh, what is fake or not fake? Yeah. Uh, what What were you looking for, like when it's when it's real? Looking for the movement, glass, and the bracelet. Yeah. Can you show us like an example with like some of your watches? That's me, mate. Wesley. So, what's your name? My name is Dejas. Ahmed. Ahmed. Where's he? Yeah, first thing you're looking at the bracelet. Yeah, and the second thing, we open the file. Yeah, checking the time, date. So, if this moves, moves correctly? Yeah, when yeah. this moves correctly, it's the first step. But like the last step, yeah, we still need to bring out the tools to open the back, we're looking for the inside. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're yeah, looking the bracelet code, yeah, fill the bracelet, how to like the smooth and the case. Yeah. See the side if they are fake, the glasses can change the original one or the aftermark one. Yeah. yeah and that's it, it's quite easy. Cool. And what what you guys uh, I mean what are you guys selling down here? Like all Rolexes or different style watches? So it's Hublots, Breitlings. Mm. Uh, what would you say is like the most popular wa- watch at the minute? It's a Rolex, you can't go wrong. Yeah. It's just like a classic, innit? Everyone wants a Rolex. Yeah, yeah. that's them. Everyone loves Rolex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's them. Like, most stock is Rolex. Mm. Yeah, it's like. Cool. And that's me. How's the music? Cool, say that. You're just 14 years old? I'm oh, 15 now. Basically. You're 14, bro. Stop lying, bro. I'm 15 this month. So how how do you end up working in Hatton Garden? He uh, he does he works with us on a part time basis. Yeah. He he gets homeschooled and mm. then uh, he comes down here and does a few hours of work. Wicked. How, how do you how do you find each other? Your family or? Um, he come down one day. Uh, he saved up his like pocket money and was working on the weekends. Yeah. 
and bought some gold off of us. No way, okay. And then just kept coming down asking about the watches and then one thing led to another and now now he's here with us a few days a week just so you're hustling. Learning the trade and hustling and trying to sell as many watches as he can. What's the most expensive watch you sold? Uh, how much is that worth? Like is it? Bloody yeah. So it's a good salesman? Yeah, he does very well for himself. He sells a few watches and uh, yeah, young Polak kid learning the trade. Good. Uh, nice to meet you, mate. So, but what's your name again? Oliver. Oliver, nice Wesley. Nice he got 1.3 million views on TikTok the other day. Did he? What was he doing? What the hell was that? A video with Troy upstairs just uh, buying a watch off of him. Yes, Jack. You all right? Bro. How are you? I've got a sold order for that root bit. Yeah. How much is it? 2023. I need 31. 31. That's dear, no? Full set, everything with it. It's battered. Needs a British. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> this is a new addition to Hatton Garden. We've got a juice bar now. They're running away from the camera, but this is a new addition. Okay, so when you're out here shopping, buying your watches, yeah, come and get come a juice. Here, get refreshed. Like, get 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 the dough special. Yeah, that's that's watermelon, <laughs> strawberry, pineapple, lime, and a bit of mint. It's art for the dough special. Lovely. Uh, nice to meet you. What, what's your name? Me too. Irene. Irene. That's it. Wesley. Sorry. What's it like working in here in Hatton Garden? It's always quite busy. Well, yes. So yeah. We've opened up a couple of weeks ago. Nice, nice. So when it's hot summer's day, get your ice cream. Perfect, like a proper Italian gelato. Nice, nice. Croissant, coffee, smoothies, uh, milkshakes, fresh yeah. juices. Yeah. yeah. Excellent, Hi. cool. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So it's not just watches in Hatton Garden. These guys specialise in drip. Yeah, just yeah. So like all exclusive trainers, Jordans, okay. Louis Vuittons, Dior's. Got some Lambins up there. They've got some Bougie Supreme stuff up there. Uh, they've also got a family brand, which is sick, which I uh, get that on camera. I wear a lot of this. New exclusive just came out last week. We've got yeah. um, bags below, below retail, Dior, Gucci. We've got exclusive items such as Supreme Margiela. Nice, nice. We've got our family brand over here, real artistic people, more Supreme. Um, Supreme hats, stuff that you won't find in any regular shop. Um, what else have we got? Oh, Supreme Night. Honestly, we have too much to say. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, you got too many, I can't got keep got up. This is nothing, this is about 20% of what we have, but we're always changing and we're always trying to adapt to the times. Nice. Everything so which is brand new, we just try to nice. so, get. So if you come to Hatton Garden, get your jewellery and also get a bit of drip as well. Exactly, you know cool. what I mean? Right, nice to meet you. Have a good one, man. We do like a lot of trade. We specialise in a lot of trade. When contact. you say trade, you mean like... like trade to trade, so like those of watch dealer, I'm a watch dealer, okay. like buy and sell off each other. Mm. Um, and then also we've got like Instagram and stuff, so you get clients through there. Mm. And we've been doing it now for like three, four years myself. You have your own existing clients and stuff. So. Uh, and when you're trading, are those traders all in the UK or do you do like worldwide? No, worldwide. So we mm. sell to Hong Kong, America, stuff like that. Yeah. Like in the watch game, even though it's big and you're on the other side of the world, it's, it's very small. Like we're all on the same WhatsApp group chats and stuff like really? that. So you end up linking up with people that you've never met, but you're doing millions of pounds worth of deals each month. So the, the watch industry is kind of like everyone knows everyone in a sense? Not, not a sense of everyone knows everyone, but you might know someone who knows him. So like, hmm. I know you, you know Darwin, you put us together if you get what I mean. And that's, yeah. that's how it works. In terms of watches, what, what's the best country to buy them from? Obviously different, different countries, moment, different prices. Now, now's the UK. We're, we're the cheapest market in the world at the moment. So we do a lot of deals with like people, traders in Hong Kong, hmm. just for the fact that they, they pay Hired in the UK, right? So yeah. So they might want to also buy in bulk then, because they're you're cheaper. They might want to buy. Yeah, definitely. So it's quite good business to be a watch dealer yeah, at the minute. 100%. Nice, 100%. cool, interesting, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, Have yeah. A good day. You too. Enjoy Hatton Garden. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Okay, so that's some insight into Hatton Garden. There, you have different people selling watches all around the world. There. Oh, this is my boy Jimmy. Just Jimmy Hendrix. Wesley, nice to meet it's you. It's the guy for the grills. Yeah. Is it? Is it sell grills. Diamond grills, show them the grills, show them the grills. So these guys specialize in grills. I'm downstairs in the arcade, he's at 41 Gravel Street. Right around the corner. Around the corner. Okay. He what? together, he's like my partner basically. Is it? Well, Separate uh, businesses, but partner basically. Wicked, so what, you, you yourself sell grills? We sell grills, we do all jewelry watches, all as a collaborative. Yeah. You know I'm saying, um, yeah, the source we stock to, mm. yeah, a bit of a mix. What about yourself downstairs then? Your... I do watches, jewelry, custom jewelry and grills. Is that like more diamond sets? Yeah. Okay. Like is that like a big thing in uh, like England? I know in America it's all like the Jesus piece and yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. Not as much as getting iced out. Like getting yeah, custom jewelry like Cubans. Okay. Um, custom pendants. Yeah. Mm. Um, females are more getting into jewelry now as well, so they get like name tags, custom letters. 
sure. initial pendants. So yeah. How, how'd you get into how'd you get into grills and stuff like that? That's, that's, that's quite a niche. I've seen all watches in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it is with grills. Yeah, I feel like grills impacts all markets. When you go into watches and jewelry, you're aiming more for like just people that have money. Mm. But then if you think there's space for everyone to eat. The people that have less money, they can afford the grills and they might not be able to afford a watch. So what I do is I have a specific category for each. Someone that has less money will get silver grills, so that's cheaper. Someone that has like a decent amount of money might get gold. Mm. Someone who has the same amount of money and some sort of a watch, they'll get a diamond set. Mm. So it's like I got I got a piece for each client. You know what I'm saying. Well, when they're buying grills, how much should they be coming with? Uh, I say. I say like, yeah, it depends on what, what you're getting, but minimum, like a hundred pounds start. Okay. A hundred pounds. So start. nothing compared to watches. Watches nah. you're spending 5k Easy. minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly that, exactly that. How'd you actually end up here though? Like, how'd you get into all of this? You know what it is? This is literally the land of jewellery. This yeah. is the land of jewellery. If you want to get into any jewellery venture, any, any phones, type of... <laughs> this is like hustling, <laughs> it's not it's not Hustle and bustle. Really yeah, no, no, that's me, yeah. <laughs> if you want to get to any no venture to, to do with jewellery, this is known as the place for jewellery. So when I, I was thinking about I want to take this jewelry from a lot larger scale. I knew High Guard is definitely the move. Yeah. It's the place you need to be. I'm saying. Sweet, man. Sure. Right, nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. Oh, if they want to find you, well, where can they find you? So you can find me on Instagram at AGB Jewelers. Um, on, on everything, to be fair. YouTube, TikTok, AGB Jewelers. Just down there. Just down there. Just right there. To the right. I'm saying. Awesome. And what about yourself? Yeah. In the arcade? I'm in the arcade downstairs. Look for the grey wall. Mazal Kettles. You see the MK tag? Yes. Come on. Uh, I double strip towel. What you got on? <laughs> I got a two-tone rose gold royal low bust down, fully loaded, big boogers in the bezel, mm. something like this. Do you know what? It's not expensive as you think. Yeah. They're like twenty-five k. Light work. Is that light work for you? <laughs> light work. What, what, what's the most you've spent on a on a watch on a kettle? Uh, do you know what, bro? I don't. I think it would be silly for me to own a watch. Where I'm yeah. working in the industry, I just wear what's in stock. I don't need to. Mm buy a watch if that makes any sense yeah yeah i guess if you're like a watch dealer there's not much snobbery going on because like you're obviously dealing with watches every day it's not yeah. like a... yeah it's like it's pretty normal yeah it's, yeah, kind it's pretty of... normal yeah so now we're going to go to the polishes it's where we get our watches polished so for example we buy a watch from someone it's not in great condition we send it here it comes back brand new mm. so we're going to pop in there now charlie stop talking to the ops <laughs> we'll meet you on the rebound we work don't know what you do yeah, Come show me quick. You got to watch on you. Um, I want the, the... Right, so this is proper hustle and bustle. You can be walking down the street and someone's trying to offer yeah, you a watch. Yeah, this is this is my friend mm. who I know from not jewelry, who's a lift engineer, who's coincidentally working in Hatton Garden. Right. And he just mentioned there's something wrong with his cousin's watch, so we're going to look at it now and have a look. So here it's all about networking, isn't it? Because like if you if they all know you, if they want to watch or they want to watch fits, that you're the first person to call, yeah, I guess. So like literally at Secret Garden we do everything. Servicing, polishing, repairs. It's not just buying and selling watches, we also can bring your watch back to life. Love that. Little facelift. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Little facelift. Come on, mate, let's go. Nah, he's busy. Alright, yeah. Nice to meet you. It's fake, that. It's fake, isn't it? Yeah. How do, you, how do you know it's fake? Just feel it. What the weight? Like, feels like a bit of baked beans. Tell him it's a Fugazi. Fugazi. Wow, so just from touching the watch, he knows already that it's, it's fake. Same just from the weight, is it? Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's just. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just scrap. Mm. Like, absolute bit of scrap. Is there, is, are there any other ways to tell if it's fake or not? Is it just the weight or? Uh, now, you've got, now you've got super clones where like they might cost like 500 to a grand yeah and uh to tell that you've got to take the back off and check the movement like how i was talking to you about earlier right okay and like you get them in like turkey and china they're called super clones like i said yeah nice. so like they're like really really good fake that's yeah. what that's, that's that's what the rich wear so rich people they'll buy a 100 grand watch and they'll buy the fake version of what well, fake version as well so and as you can see a lot of people talk about it's not safe to wear a watch in london you're in Hatton Garden, the Diamond District, where everyone's wearing watches. Do you feel safe? I feel pretty safe, mate. Honestly, I, I friendly agree. vibe. I agree. Obviously, seeing the arcade, there's... Like it's a normal... Uh, Bentley run. Nah. Was it Rolls Royce? That's a Rolls Royce Phantom. So you get some bougie customers coming down there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, all different types of people. You bring your watch back to life. Exactly. So okay. if, you, if your watch is dying, this is where we come to. This is another polisher. That's me, Wesley. I started on my own about two and a half years ago. 
Really? And, uh, I was a goldsmith before, so I made jewelry and stuff like that. But moving to watches, more, uh, more competitive market, I think, but definitely more money to be earned. So moving to repairs and stuff like that. So before you just repairing the standard jewellery but now it's just focused yeah, on watches just, just, just watches like only i am watches now as well like uh i went to switzerland to learn how to do the protect the leaps and all the markets really like that, yeah, so. but repairing watches that's because of the the market's just changed now hasn't it compared yeah, to like and, 10 years ago and, and so. especially up here now so many people sell watches it's an untapped market i think there's only four or five people doing what we do really so it's quite nice you know what i mean i'm not fighting loads of different people with jewellery everyone's doing it like everyone's doing repairs everyone's competing so what was originally wrong with this this watch here so this, bracelet. this bracelet i don't know if you can see it see if you can see see how dro droopy it's gone yeah it's so a bit it's wonky, got that right? much. when they come from the factory they're dead straight like that yeah and really tight if you look in these little links you've got a little bit of movement in between everyone okay so you need and to that's because it's worn yeah so what we do is once we pull it all apart, these are three separate pieces. So once we pull it apart, we'll like laser repair all of these little holes and grooves and stuff. And you see the gaps in between. Mm. And what happens is when we press it all back together with new pins, it will be dead tight and it will be like that rather than drooping. So this is how you make uh, like a second hand watch like yeah, good this, as new basically. This is like a bit more in depth. A lot of people don't go for this. Like this is more of if you're going to keep the watch for a while and you know that you're... Uh, your, what's it called? You're gonna keep it in the family or something? You want to just bring it back to life? As you can see, this was absolutely battered. So what was wrong with it to begin with? Because I know nothing about <laughs> about watches, was, uh, but over polished and just damaged heavily, to be honest. Yeah, and, where's um, yeah, brought it back to life. Where's my New shoulders, got? lapping the bezel, and polishing, laser work, mm. like literally. Spent three or four hours on this to make it nice, but really, nice, like new again. This is another example of their work. So, like, this was a this watch is like eight years old. I gave it to them in terrible condition. They've actually brought it back to life. So now we can sell this as basically mint condition watch, mm. not over polished. You know, the bezel's not over rounded. The shoulders ain't over rounded. It's still sharp. If you know what you're doing, you can you can make an old watch look nice and presentable. Literally yeah, close to factory. And this will sell for thirty-two thousand five hundred pound. Mm. This end. Repairs, Diamond District. So look, you can see this is all diamonds now. It's changed, isn't it? People are getting like lab-grown diamonds I've seen as yeah, well. Is that lab, like a thing? Lab-grown diamonds are like 80% cheaper. Like you can get a sick wedding ring for 10 grand or go lab and pay two and a half grand. Yeah. It's crazy. But it's like, and you can't tell. It, on a diamond tester, it will still come up as a real diamond. It is a real diamond. It's just grown in a lab. It's a bit like IVF before a diamond. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you can tell though, they yeah, you have, to, you, have so to put, the, you, you have to put it through a machine. Okay, I mean, if, if you look for a loop and the diamond is super clean, there's no carbon, no dark marks, mm. it's either a flawless diamond and it's going to be worth a fortune, or it's a lab, it's a lab brand. Yeah, but like, I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with lab brands. Nah. Charlie's just saying that because that's what his engagement ring is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but like, in terms of watches, obviously, it's a lot of money to be spent on the watch. Do, do you think, unless you're, unless you're a trader, does it matter if you wear fake watches at all, do you think? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. If you wear a fake watch, but you can afford a real one, that's on you. Mm. But if you're faking it till you're making it and wearing a fake watch and telling people it's real, you've got mental health issues. <laughs> <laughs> Heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. That sounded really arrogant, didn't it? It's how I feel. I can't stand people who wear fake watches. So that's the thing, a, jewel a jeweler would care more than your average person because like, yeah, you're course. involved in watches. And yeah, of course. So now we're going to go up to the secret garden we're going to show you our showroom, where all the magic happens, where all the madness happens, where we make our content. This is this is Big Homie. This is Uncle Bibbs. Uncle Bibbs, nice to meet you. I'm going to show you his workshop now. Nicely. He's been here a very, very long time. He specialises in making things, repairing things. Anything you want done, this is Mr. Make It Happen. Uncle Bibbs, Bibbs Workshop, in the same building as us. It's our Muslim brother as well, because there's a lot of Muslims here. Jews, Muslims. But alhamdulillah, the Muslims are on the up. <laughs> So just to the right of the arcade where we were before, now, now we're going into Doll's store, the secret garden. Let's right. have a look. First of all, I'll take you down to Bibbs's. So this is another workshop. Okay. Now, first of all, let me, let me, I'm going to take you here first. Let me show you how cool this is. What are you trying to do? The parrot? He's going to kidnap me. Film this, shark. So yeah, you don't just have your standalone shops when you come down here. 
There's also people that are working down here, repairing, selling jewelry. Yeah, so here, we've got a prayer room. This is where we come and pray. Five a day, keep the devil away. Okay, well, you got some times on there. Yeah, so this is the prayer times. Prayer times, okay. So yeah, not this jewelry, hmm. worship. But that, that just shows you how Hatton Gardens change, isn't it? The, the community and the demographic that's now here before was like a lot of Jew, Jewish people, and but now a lot of a uh, big Muslim community. For the win. Good friends of ours. Wow. This is, uh, they make diamond rings, they do engraving, they do cadding. This is my brother Yasir. Yo, hey, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, it's okay to film? Yeah, sure, sure, man. So you guys are making jewelry in here? We are designing. And oh, you're designing them? Yeah. Wow. It's just workshop. So what, what's going on there? It's like a, it's some software. It's something, yeah. Uh, Brendan, what you're designing, Brendan? Brendan. So is that, is he making a ring or something? What's the item? It's a mouthpiece. Mouthpiece? Mm -hmm. Like grills? No, like a fashion, like a mask. Oh, okay, some kind of mask. Okay, cool. And are these the machines to make some? It's for the laser engraving. Oh, to engrave diamonds and for diamonds, jewelry. Like jewelry All the jewelry stuff. stuff. Yeah. Wow. Big operation. This is like the behind the scenes of Hatton Garden. Of wow, okay, so. That's why even in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so this is stuff you don't get to see. Oh, right, there, hell. I can show you more. Okay. That's wow. Messy. Machines are running at the moment. Uh, Feels like we're in a tunnel. Like, it's like uh, 3D wax painting machines. Oh, okay. And they design something. Mm. We can put here and make the ring make what? in the wax. I can show you how okay. it looks like. It's come like this. Okay, this gives you an idea on yeah. how the ring will turn out in yes. the end. Okay. From this one, we'll make the casting. Wow. The metal platinum, so, kind of gold and stuff. So all in one room, they can design it just over here, yep. and then they can mold it and get an idea. Right. And what, you'll send those designs to who? Uh, another the, country uh, or? No, with the customers. Like, we got like more than like five, six hundred clients. Okay. So, uh, all over the UK. Then wow. they're giving the jobs to us. See, so he's, that's a ring, obviously. Yeah, so <laughs> is there like a certain software you will use to yeah, design it? Is it called software called Matrix. Matrix? Yeah. Is that like the, the industry standard for yes. designing? Yes. Okay, so this, this software here is called Matrix, and this is to design any jewelry you want to find. Yes. Wow, okay. How long have you been in Hatton Garden for? I am four and a half years now. Four and a half years? Fourteen. Oh, fourteen? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you've seen Hatton Garden change a lot throughout the years? Yeah. yeah. Would you, say, would you say people are still interested in rings or is it a diff different no. kind of jewelry now? I think the world sent people interested in the precious side. Precious means it's a jewelry. It's a awesome, mate. Yeah. Oh, nice so to meet you. Mix it with so we're going to another workshop. Okay. This is another, another workshop for jewelry, as Dole said, but when you're on the outside, it looks like it could be apartments or something, but every shop we see is a jewelry, uh, a jewelry kind of a store. And that you have people here mending jewelry. This is where they just, so now here, look, what's he doing there, look. So he's setting diamonds. Satman has a ring in his hand. This, this is the real basement, you're getting the... This is the real craft, you're yeah. You're getting the real behind the scenes. Yeah, proper. But completely different to what you do. These are all like rings and diamonds or yeah. watches, but yeah. that just shows you how but, different. But when we, when we get our pendants made or our chains made or our bracelets made, we come here, we go to the room we were just in, hmm. they do the design, we do the design, we send the design to them, they do like a CAD, which is like a, how can I describe what a CAD is? It's like a rough idea of wax of what yeah. the design's gonna look like. Yeah. And then they come here and metal it, plate it, drill it. Wow. Cut. <laughs> Charge me for this one. Charge me for this? Charge me for this? Yeah. Why are you going to charge me for this, Uncle? Yeah, let, let me call for my agent. Bring your agent? Yeah. He will deal with you. Yeah, he was a big actor. He was an Emmerdale. <laughs> was he actually? <laughs> oh, when he was in Eastern, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Bibs Workshop. Everything under one roof. So now we're going to go upstairs into the secret garden. Like I said, it's where all the business happens. Mm. All the madness happens, all the content. Me smacking the shit out of all the boys. Pause. As you can see that, the secret garden. A lot of security in here, you got the double doors. Yeah, double doors, one way in, one way out. 
so yeah, this is this is it really. Mm. So uh, Bill works there, I work here, Dan works there, Sam works behind here, the man with the plan, Secret Garden logo, Danny the Jeweler logo. We normally have all things on display here, but... Sold out, busy. No, no, we've got nothing <laughs> on display today. And uh, yeah. This is much more spacious than the other place we've been to, compared to the workshops downstairs and the arcade. Yeah, it's got different. Lot... Yeah. yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's different here. Different kind of setting. Yeah, it's different. But like you said, you're more private label, you sell to... A... Yeah, we don't really have many walk-ins, it's appointment only. Yeah. So, yeah. What kind of customer be coming into the Secret Garden? Uh, all different types of walk of life, man. Businessmen, footballers, rappers, crypto. You no, know, crypto's popping right now, so we're yeah. getting a lot of guys who are successful in crypto. We accept crypto for payment as well. So now I'm going to go now to our vault, and I'm going to bring some of our a very small amount of stock to show you. Prices, names, etc., like that. So yeah, I'll probably be about five minutes and I'll cool, be back. Have a look, nice, nice. Show you some of the pieces we've got in stock. Like I said, this is just a fraction of what's available, mm. but it'll give you a rough idea. So here are all Rolexes, but we've got a Richard Mille, uh This is a Mancini, crazy piece. How much would you say is in, is in this box right now? Uh, 600 grand, maybe? 600 grand? Yeah, 600 grand. This, this, this piece is like 180. Okay. This is like 90. This is like 40, 40, 34, 28, 16, 18. This is 90 bags. This is called a platinum day date meteorite TBR with a baguette bezel and baguette in the dial. And this, this watch is a special piece. Basically, the meteorite dial, every single one's different. It's, used, it's like real rock out of space. So really? every single dial is different. There's not one dial the same in the world. So that's quite a unique piece. So this is 90,000? Yeah, this is 90,000. This is a white gold olive. This is another presidential watch with a white gold band, 40 millimeter case. That's about 32,000. And then something like this is called a Rolex Datejust 41. This is like your beginner's watch. Mm. So people who want their first watch, we always recommend a Datejust, something like this. This will cost you like eight and a half, nine K. So Basically, if you're buying your first ever watch, you want to keep it nice and simple, yeah. not too expensive. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. Why is that? Because they, obviously the money, but is it because uh, like how to look after it? Uh, no, I'd say it's the money. Someone buying their first watch isn't going to want to spend 50, 60K mm. unless they bought XRP at two cents. So, yeah, <laughs> but the average Joe, the normal person is going to buy their first watch. They're going to want to spend between eight and 10K and then they'd rather keep that watch, earn more money, buy another one, or they chop this one in and upgrade and slowly, slowly, Get something that's what I notice in, in the arcade downstairs. People like to trade their watches. Obviously, yeah. the longer you keep it, the value does go up, yeah, doesn't it? Correct, yeah. That's how we get a lot of our stock. People part exchange. The previous customers might have had a day date. They now want a Daytona, so they come swap their day date for the Daytona. That's how we get stock, if that makes sense. So, when you're buying watches, you kind of want to stick to one jeweler. It's all about trust, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Some people shop about. I call them brasses. They shop about. You know, they want to say they can get it cheaper, but I personally think we're one of the best priced yeah. in Hatton Garden. So they always, end up, they always end up coming back to us anyway. So if you want to haggle, go to the arcade, but if you want your real price, then come to the, the oh, Secret Garden. Some people sell watches for a lot cheaper because they haven't got overheads, they haven't got an office, they run up and down the strip like nutters, and they'll sell a 20 grand watch for a 200 pound drink. Hmm. That's not a good look, you know? What's your favorite out of this whole collection, if you had to choose one? Um, I think for every day where I like the rose gold olive, but I think the RM is the daddy. This is, this is a crazy piece. Looks like a like, 150 pound toy. We, me and Charlie made a video <laughs> the other day asking people guess the price of the watch. Have a guess. 12 pounds. 12 pounds? I have no idea. Uh, 430. 430 pound? Yeah. Close. And everyone was saying like 500 pounds, 600 pounds, but in reality it's 180 grand. Wow. Crazy. So you can literally buy a house with that watch yeah, if you wanted literally. to. Yeah, literally. What makes these watches so expensive? Obviously, the some are classic, but is there something in there, the, de the design or something that? Um, mate, that watch probably retails at probably about, I don't even want to know what retail is, probably about 70, 80K. It's all about hype. And, mm. and so you can't get this watch from Richard Mille, so you pay the premium. Mm. That's, that's what a lot of these watches are, you know? You can't get them. There's some watches what go for under retail, so you might buy this from Rolex for 37 grand, but right. I'm only going to buy it off you for 32 grand, because yeah. it's not a very desirable watch. Yeah. Some watches go for way under list, if that makes sense where this watch goes for way over list. This watch retails at something silly like 10, 11K. To buy from me is 18K. If you, if you had a watch, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but say you had this watch and you wanted to put diamonds in it, we could do that for you. 
How much will you be spending if you're going to customise the watch? What's the kind of price range you're, you're um, looking at? It all at? depends. So, you, for example, something like this, you buy the watch for, like I said, 8, 9K, and it would cost 8, 9K to ice out. So about 18 grand all in if that was all diamonds. Mm. Always go for plain Jane. Plain Jane is slang for no diamonds for investment. Yeah. You know, diamonds look cool. They dance, they shine in the sun. It's cool when you're in Dubai on the beach with a diamond watch on, but you're going to spend 35 grand and I'm going to buy that coffee for 28. <laughs> So all these people recently, they're buying all sorts of stuff. They're buying like crypto and, you know, maybe even buy cars. Would you say watches themselves are a good investment? Long term, they're super safe. Yeah. Super safe. So you should buy watches even for they're looking good, but also yeah, as an investment yeah, too. Yeah, you enjoy it and it's an investment. Look, I'll give you an example. You've got things like a stainless steel Daytona 10 years ago was six grand. Mm. It's 15 grand today, you know. The yeah. bank's not giving you 120% return on your money. And that's watch is only worth that now because the market's dropped. In 2021, during COVID, everything went crazy. So the watch I showed you there, for example, a day day olive, today's 40 grand. Mm. In COVID, that watch was 70K. Wow. So the market's just gone crazy. There's big inflation. Yeah. People it's made dropped back down now to where prices should be. Yeah. And it's definitely a good time to buy at the moment. It's a buyer's market. So watches is a big investment. You can make a lot of money in it. Obviously, today, we've seen in lots of places. We've seen how they're made, um, how they're sold. What would you say to anyone who wants to get involved with watches? Uh, it's a very hard industry. Don't look at the glitz and the glamour and see everyone driving nice cars and wearing nice clothes. You don't see what goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of ups and downs regarding time wasters. It's a good industry, but it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah, behind the Instagram, the glitz and glamour, yeah. there's, a, there's a big backstory, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, exactly that. Like cool. I said, Dan's been in the industry 20 years. This wasn't overnight. Yeah. All right, cheers, mate. I've seen a lot of, uh, lot of stuff today. But no problem. If you want your watches, go to Dole. This was the, the Secret Garden. I'll see you for the next one. Peace.